Hallo, we are with Peter van Wingerden. He is the initiator of Floating Farm in Rotterdam. Peter, how did you get the idea to build a farm on the water? Yes, so we are a development company. We are designing and developing floating constructions. And uh, we were working in uh, New York City, uh, designing a floating housing project on the Hudson River. And that was shortly after Hurricane Sandy completely wrecked the city. It was completely flooded and, and no transportation was possible anymore. And one of the effects that struck me most was actually there was no fresh, healthy food available in the supermarkets in New York City. And then we were looking at the, the process, the logistics, and we, we found that every city only has for two or three days fresh food in the city and, and is completely depending on transportation of food. So looking at the climate change effects of heavy rainfalls or of, of sea level rising, we thought we should produce food close to consumers in what we call a climate adaptive way. So why not underwater? So that's when we started to design a farm that can feed the city close to consumers from the water. Wow, and you have the farm here in, in Rotterdam in the harbor and how many cows do you have? Well, currently we have uh, 30 cows that produces about 700, 800 liters per day that we process into dairy products like uh, yogurt and milk and buttermilk and butter, of course. Oh, fantastic. Let's go and have a look. Sure. I was wondering, how does this farm contribute to sustainability and circularity? Yeah, for us, maybe, maybe we can start with the goals why we are doing this, actually. So I was telling already about the, the origin that happened in New York. But for us, most important is to produce healthy food very close to consumers. And consumers live inside cities. So we wanted to find space inside cities. You can, you, can, you can build on rooftops, you can build in caves, but we looked into the water also because of the space and the climate change. But the uh, most important goal is actually to, short, to shorten the chain of food distribution. We are supplying food all over the world together and we should shorten that chain. It, it creates a lot of food losses, it creates a lot of pollution and it doesn't help on the quality of food and the awareness about food. And while we are producing healthy food close to consumers, we create also awareness about sustainability and circularity. So, more and more we are part of a circular system inside the city. So for instance, I have here some grass. This is grass from the, the Feyenoord Stadium. So this is from one the of the- From the footballers. From the football pitch. <laughs> the, the, the biggest stadium over here. And the grass goes to the cows. The cows produce dairy and manure, and that goes back to the stadium. And the same we does with more products. So residual streams from the city and that helps on circularity, of course, but also on awareness. So people really love the story that we say, this is from the Feyenoord pitch. And then they start thinking about how is this process? We should drink more milk or dairy or healthy products. So that's how we contribute to the circular system. Okay, and, and how is it sustainable? Well, we, for instance, we collect rainwater on the roof. We filter the rainwater that comes back as drinking water. We, we use our solar panels, our floating solar panels that produce a lot of energy. So this is almost fully sustainable. Our next step would be to do some uh, water mining from the river. So if we can make clean water from the river and give it back to the cows, that would be fantastic. And obviously our third goal on this water stuff would be to make clean water again from the urine from the cows. Because the, the cows produce a lot of urine as well that contains a lot of fresh water that we could reuse as processed water. Maybe we can have a look inside to show you. That would be great. So PC, you were talking about water and the sustainability of what you would like to achieve in this farm. Can you tell me what we see here? Uh, yes, we, so, so we designed a three layer building. So on top, uh, the cows are running. This is our processing floor. And the cows produce manure and urine and milk. And the manure and urine, we collect with a robot. We call it a manure robot. And the manure robot dumps the manure and the urine in this machine over here. And over here, we split it in dry matter and urine again. So in that way, we do not produce ammonia. Ammonia is, is, a, is a thing over here in our country. 
but we split it immediately within three hours, so no ammonia is produced. And then we have some very interesting materials. So we have this dry, dry matter full of nutrients that we give back to the parks in our city and to the plants and to the trees. But we also have urine. And urine contains 85% water and some interesting nutrients as well. So it would be a terrific project within the water mining project if we could take out water over here and reuse it, maybe as drinking water for the cows or processing water for the floors. So it would be fantastic if we can create clean water from the urine and reuse the salts to give back to the plants or to the parks. So to give you an example, if we could use this salts to create herbs or lettuce, uh, that would be amazing. Part of the circular city again. Okay, and how do you think people, I mean, it doesn't smell at all here, huh? so that is Correct. really good, good to know. Yeah. <laughs> Normally a farm is pretty smelly, but this farm is very clean. Um, when you have this, this, this water and these products and, and you recycle it in, into the parks and so, uh, I, I assume you talk a lot with stakeholders, with different people, different communities. Can you tell a little bit about that process? How did that go? Yeah, that, that's for us a really important question. So when we started this, this concept, we were talking to investors, we were talking to companies to become part of it. But, but due to the, to the corona, to the COVID virus, we had to change our business model from B2B into B2C. So now we are communicating with uh, consumers inside the city and that helps enormously about creating awareness. So if you look at our stakeholders, I think for now our main stakeholders are technology companies, but also the public inside cities to create this awareness. So they are a very important stakeholder for us right now. And if we could reuse the nutrients for plants, we can also sell the nutrients to the citizens that they can feed to their plants on their, in their houses and their balconies and their terraces and stuff like that. So that all creates more awareness about being circular and sustainable. Yeah, but not only that, it also creates awareness about the technology behind it eh? and how to make from urine clean water and how to do this and what impact that can have in society for, well, perhaps toilets of people uh, citizens here in Rotterdam. So in that sense, you're not only a floating farm, but you're also a living farm, a living uh, lab in our water mining project. And that is really interesting. Um, you told me about products like uh, the milk from the cows. Are you selling that to people? Yes, so we're selling the products like the dairy products. So we, trans we, we, we process the milk into yogurts and stuff like that. We sell it immediately in our store over here. So consumers come and visit us. And the same we want to do with the nutrients. So you're absolutely right. If we can create this very transparent farm with all the technology inside, people got more awareness about healthy products, but also, also about available technologies that can really improve people's life in inside cities. Now it sounds that you have already achieved quite a lot, but were there any obstacles that you had to really conquer in that uh, in that whole road to this farm? Well, there, there were, uh, and sometimes you think, "Well, I should never started this," because you know, if you want to do something completely new, if you want to be not innovative but almost disruptive if you want to do something completely different and what we are doing here is we we merging two famous technologies in the Netherlands about water and about agriculture into a new building so we came across a lot of obstacles from especially the permit stages so permits were the most difficult to, to achieve the authorities they say why should we do this I mean we have farming we have water knowledge why should we do this so it took us, I think, two to four years to only have a permit to make this living lab, this testing lab, this innovation possible over here. So permits were the most difficult uh, hurdle to take, actually. Okay. Are there any hurdles left now? Uh, well, we, uh, we have been hit by the virus, that, that's obvious. So our revenue dropped down a bit and uh, we still want to invest in more technologies. And we still want to be very transparent to the audience, but we had to close the building due to the 1.5 meter. So um, these are still hurt, uh, hurdles that we need to overcome. But further, we are well, keen to develop our second farm, 
uh, next second door. Farm. So there will be a second farm next door. Uh, there will be a spectacular building as well, and also part of the circular system that we are creating over here in the port of Rotterdam. So that's your future plan, to yes, make a second farm. And what will be on that farm? So we want to produce the full protein line. So we have dairy over here, and in the second farm will be eggs. So we will have chicken, and we also will produce plants, so all kinds of herbs and green leaves, and that we are already testing over here. So it will be fabulous, the interaction between the two farms, and show to the world that it can be done fully inside the cities on a climate adaptive way, on the water. And there are so many countries fighting with water, and we can help them to make it useful, uh, like Bangladesh or Singapore. There is no space at Singapore. So the second farm will be uh, part of the circular thinking as well. So if we can manage to have nutrients out of the water and create plants on the second farm, then we have the circularity again. Uh, I hope water mining can contribute to that. Uh, with all our partners, uh, maybe I hope that that will be possible. We're looking forward to the project and to meet everybody and all the knowledge to see if we can contribute a little bit to this transparency of technology. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you, Peter. Thank you very much, Peter.